After the abolition of slavery at the end of the 18th century, a naval base was established in Sierra Leone to serve as a settlement for freed slaves. This place was called the Province of Freedom, which later became Freetown. By 1855, over 50,000 freed slaves had been settled there and whose descendants became known as Creoles. They developed a specific culture and architecture. In Freetown, you see many good examples of Creole houses made of wood. Most date from the late 19th century. There is also the language. Most of the people in Sierra Leone speak Creole, a form of English evolved out of a mix of languages from the various settlers and traders. Sierra Leoneans will be thrilled to hear a visitor using some basic Creole words. So, here are some examples. Howdy, buddy. How are you? Ah, well, I'm fine. Come make you can enjoy yourself a little bit in the saloon. Come and enjoy yourself a little bit in Sierra Leone. Part of Sierra Leone's cultural and historic heritage is the Maroon Church, named after one of the original groups of settlers. The church was built about 1820, making it one of Freetown's oldest. It's just two blocks away from the famous and notorious cotton tree. This tree is older than the city itself. Slaves were once sold here, and under its huge branches, the Nova Scotian settlers sang hymns in praise for their safe passage. Today, the cotton tree marks the entrance of the busy downtown. The National Railway Museum, another important historical place. The museum pays tribute to the country's long gone railway, which once stretched more than 400 kilometers nationwide. A short tour through these restored train engines and cars is very interesting. Among the most shining examples is the British governor's personal coach, built in 1930. Apart from historic sites, Freetown has an interesting and varied choice of things to see and do, such as a shopping tour of the big market. When you enter the place, you will be surrounded by a wide range of traditional products, arts and crafts such as basket weaving, wood carvings, palm furniture, and rustic pottery. Come inside and have a look. Come inside, come have a look. One of the most desirable of Sierra Leone's handicrafts is its homemade cloth. Sierra Leone is known for its fabrics, especially country cloth and gara. Gara is a thin cotton material which is tie-dyed or batik printed, usually with bright synthetic colors which makes for cheerful curtains, sheets, and outfits. Woven on wooden looms in the hinterland, country cloth is a coarse material made from wild cotton into narrow strips that are joined to make blankets, hammocks, and clothing. Apropos clothing, walking through Freetown, you will find many fashion shops with interesting designs. Oh, yeah. 
The fashion design industry in Sierra Leone is quite strong and well developed. Take the chance and have a look at the creative work of young designers who clothe the Sierra Leoneans in a very fashionable way. In spite of Western influence, traditional norms and customs still dominate. A large proportion of the population still observe their traditional beliefs and cultural practices, with masks playing an important part. Like this mask, it represents for the fishermen in, on the beach, anywhere the fishing in this country. They have a mask, at times when they want to fishing, that marks will go and show them the particular place where they will go and have they will go and catch so many fish for that day. Masks are a major feature of many ceremonies, 